go. I forgot I had the camera on. Yeah, right. We all know better. This is called staging. Anyway, how's it going, peeps? This is the new place. And this is part of the new setup. Sort of. It's not perfect. It's not finished. But, hey, we all got to do what we got to do. I love the new mirror. I don't have to, like, bend over or hold one up in front of my face. I got lucky. I spotted it. I got it. This is, this is, believe it or not, dry shampoo. It's just up here in this little cabinet thing that I've got on the desk. I've got a really nifty desk, but I'm not going to show it to you yet, because right now it looks like caca. Um, it's just got stuff everywhere. And some of this, this room, I mean, this is supposed to be my office and my makeup space and all of that stuff. Yeah, it's a mess. Anyway, yep, I'm back mostly. I, at this point, still have not figured out my schedule, but I do want to be back doing videos. Still haven't exactly decided which way this is going to go. Anybody curious, this is what's on the face. This is the eye palette and the shiny bit is one of these Ace Beauté pots. And this one's called Cotton Candy. It's a glimmer shadow. It's really pretty. I've actually had it for quite a while and it's still in great shape which is kind of interesting for sort of the, the cream to powder kind of stuff. Yeah, this is the 18 hit wonders. Like usual, I've got a ton of elf on my face. I've got elf everywhere. This bit, yeah, I know what it looks like, but this bit is from Cara Beauty. It's called Vibe Out Liquid Lip Polish. And I can't remember. Let's see if I can actually find. No, of course I can't find the, the name of the color. It's not bad. It goes on really nicely. Dries down pretty well. Doesn't stay sticky. Any of that stuff. It's, it's, yeah, it works. Other stuff on the face is the Liquid Halo Glow. And I believe this is the lightest variant they have. And some of this click up concealer under the eyes. You know it's bad even when you have, especially when you have to take off your glasses to see the tiny writing and then you find out that even with your glasses off, the tiny writing up close, you've still got to adjust where it is just precisely. Old eyes. Old eyes. I've got to get them. I've got an appointment coming up to get them looked at and adjust the glasses and all that lovely stuff. Anyway. Yes, I got my hair freshly done. I actually went to a barber shop this time. Not a salon, no. 
we had one of my nephews. I was out with my sister and she had my nephew with her. Well, actually, it's great nephew. It's a grand boy. Grand boy. And he needed a haircut, so we took him to this little barber shop that he seems to like. And I said, the heck with it. My hair has gotten so long along the sides that it's sticking out over my ears, which I absolutely hate. Okay. So, off we go. Both of us are in the chair. He's sitting over there getting his itty bitty, t itty bit, itty bitty fade with his lightning bolt and everything. And I just got this, and my hair, if I do it like that, looks almost like I've got gel in it, and it'll stand up for a few minutes. It was enough, stood up long enough to make my grandnephew just absolutely delighted. He thought it was fun. Now, he's got his little poking up, but his is only like that. You know, a little bitty tiny poke up. And then his little lightning bolts on the side. Looked great. The kid was happy. I'm going, yeah, you're looking good. Anyway, if any of you are anywhere near LaVale, Maryland, it's the place is called the Sports Cave. And they've got some really, really good people behind the chairs there. They're, they're really good. It's like I was looking at this after she got done, and I was like, yeah. And the guy that was cutting, his, cutting the kid's hair, it's like that kid has been getting haircuts from this guy for several years now. So made him very happy that Mr. Man was was on duty. Anyway, LaVeo, Maryland Sports Cave. Class act. Anyway, I, like I said, I still don't know exactly where I'm going to go with this. Um, I've gotten rid of a lot of my makeup palette collection. A lot. Because, let's be real, there's not a lot I can teach people to do with makeup that, you know, I've got hooded eyes. I can teach people about that. I've got wrinkly skin. I can teach people about that, but then so can tons of other people that are on here. And not all of them are necessarily, you know, in their sixth decade. Having loose skin is a thing. Not necessarily an old thing, just a thing. Um, having hooded eyes is a thing. Not necessarily an old thing, but a thing. And I'm going, there's got to be other stuff. I mean, I can do I can do the clothes thing more. I mean, you know, this is a <laughs> this sweater is a thread up piece. I mean it's just a plain little tank that I've got a sweater over. Picked up some jewelry. This is all cheap jewelry. I pick it up wherever I pick it up. You know, it's like I could pick it up at the thrift store. I could pick it up. It's at, at you know Walmart. I don't get crazy with a lot of stuff. Now I could show you my new house, but it's not ready either, and it's not a new house. New to us, old house. Built in the 1920s. Had some work done here and there. 
there's actually space in the attic that another room could be put in. The basement is huge, but it's also got a oil furnace in there. It's not that bad, though, because it's a newer oil furnace. It's not like one of the antiques that's like wrapped in asbestos. It, but we're trying to get used to oil heat. One of the things we found out, though, is even though the adverts on the house said it had no air conditioning, yeah, it does. It's got air conditioning. Central air. And I am so happy. The guy selling it had no idea that there is central air in this house. I mean, we had central heating. We already had the ductwork. Somebody came out and put a central air unit on. There's still bunches of stuff we're trying to find out. Little things like... Google Maps is so screwed up. Just really screwed up. The pin for our house is on our neighbor. Now, I wouldn't worry about that too much, except that deliveries are an issue. And when we first got the house, and we're doing things like homeowner's insurance and all that, when they sent people out to actually examine the house to, you know, for the underwriters, they kept going next door. Next door has a couple of issues here and there, like overhanging trees, and there's quite a bit of detritus in the yard. And that kind of thing. And it's like, and they kept telling us we needed to have our roof replaced immediately. And we're going, uh, okay. And come to find out, they were looking at the neighbor's house. And there's, there's shingles missing on his house. And they were claiming we had shingles missing, we had overhanging trees in the yard. We have about four pine trees that run across the front of the yard all the way down at the end of the driveway. That's it. The neighbor has some trees along the property line, but... We've got a half acre here, so it's not like the property line is right up our nose. The road is not up our nose. If one of the trees in the roadside stand decided to fall over towards this house, I would be really surprised if even the tallest one, the top, of the tree made it to the house. We've got a couple of small, we think they're supposed to be pear trees, but they're the closest to the house and they're mostly cut down to bush height. And that's that's what we've got is cut down to bush height. Um, and they're trying to tell us that we couldn't get homeowner's insurance because of the condition of the yard and the roof and the overhanging trees. And I'm going, we went through, I think, three different companies until we finally got it through to the agent that the house they're describing ain't our house. <clears throat> and we stopped having 
people telling us we needed to have all this work done before they'd cover the house. Don't you just love it when things are screwed up on maps? There's also, there was a house behind ours. But it's been gone long enough that the little piece of driveway that they're still showing on the map that went behind our house is so grown over you can't even see where it was. It's just integrated back into the landscape. And we still get people trying to go up the driveway next to our next door neighbor and going up to the one house that's still back there and trying to find a way to curve around to come back down the back way behind our house and it's like it doesn't exist anymore. That back way does not exist and they're like why doesn't this work? And I said, because the map is wrong. It's way out of date. And we've got a driveway that uh, starts at the edge of the highway here. We're, we're in what used to be part of a farm. And a bunch of the pieces of the farm got kind of cut up into little sections for family members to have their own little piece and a house. Most of the people in the houses around us are all related in some way or another. Um, some of them belong to the family that started the farm way back when. But, and they're all, they're all very sweet people, which I really like. Nobody's chased me with a shotgun lately. Nobody's asked me my politics lately. I'm so happy to be back home. Oh, it's like okay, Maryland is not actually home, but I am about an hour and a half away from the last place in Virginia that we lived, which was in Front Royal. So, I'm good with it, all right? I'm good with it. It's as close as I need to get right now. We're right off of the edge of the Potomac, and the Potomac River has run through more of my life than I care to think about. Runs right through Alexandria, where I was born. Part of the Chesapeake Bay system, where I went swimming at beaches. I love Chesapeake blue crab. Love them. Lots. You know, it's just... I'm home. I'm a lot happier. I'm home. I'm back in the old stomping grounds. A woman that I have known since high school. We literally grew up pretty much together from high school on. She is still the bestie. She lives five minutes away. She's the one I call sister because my bio sister is no longer with us but when you've known somebody good god going on 50 years actually it's probably right around 50 years because yeah i was about 14 15 something like that when we first ran into each other and turned 65 last year, so yeah. Her birthday's about a month ahead of mine, but a year ahead otherwise. 
yeah, we, we've, we've hung out a long time. So yeah, she gets the, gets the name sister. <laughs> we both earned it more than once. Hey, I've got... Come on, let's go. It's like when she was living in Louisiana, she got caught up in Katrina. We told her to come to Front Royal, and we cleaned out the basement and put all of her family down in the basement until we could figure out something, you know, figure out whatever's next. When we were trying to move back here, she did all the footwork finding this house. So, yeah, sister. Let's see, what else has happened? Oh, before we left Oregon, our little bitty dog, Finnegan. The little Russell. He got to a point where he was no longer having any fun. So just a few days before his 16th birthday, we had to say goodbye. And I still miss the little rat. We still have Lottie. We still have Miss Lolly Dog. She's going to be 16 this year. She's getting a little more creaky, but she's still doing pretty well and is still acting like she's happy being here. We ended up taking one of our son's dogs because the dog was scaring the grandson. Well, Genji is a big dog. He's part blue tick. We think he's part pit. The rest of it is anybody's guess, um, but he's, he's enormous. He's just, he's enormous. He's tall. If he stands up, he can put his front feet on my shoulders and look me flat in the eye. He's a big doggy, but he's a big mush. He really is. He's a big Whoosh. If I tell him to sit down and behave, he will sit there and look at me and go, as I behave it? And big dogs normally scare me just out of my wits. The big boy got me one over the first time I gave him a treat. And he sat down and very gingerly took the treat out of my fingers. All I felt was dog lips. There was no teeth involved. Nothing. And I'm like, oh, you big mush. And we've been buddies ever since. That's how it works, I guess. But he's a baby. Well, kind of. He's about four years old now. And my son and his wife didn't manage to get him fixed yet. So guess who gets to do that one? I'm looking up places that uh, work with low incomes. Yeah. And then, because the dogs really ended up missing 
the cats that we had at the house. Lolly was raised with cats. But when, when we ended up being down to just the pups, we didn't get any more cats because my daughter-in-law had cats and her mother had cats. So there was cats in the house. Lolly was raised with cats and was very happy that there were cats in the house. Genji was raised with the cats in the house since he was a baby when they first got him. He was very cute. One did a big mush. And so we decided it was time to put another cat in the, in the mix. So we got this little girl cat. Buddy of ours had rescued little girl cat and shortly after they rescued her she fell apart into three more cats and then a neighbor found another spare cat about maybe a week or two older than the kittens and brought that one over and little Miss Cat decided she was going to have a foster baby herself, since she was being a foster baby. And one of the kittens came out orange. I wanted the orange cat. And then I'm going, no, no. Somebody needs to do something with Mama, too. And Mama is... An orange cat. As much of an orange cat as you will ever see a female cat. You get her in the sunlight and that butterscotch colored fur of hers shines with reds and golds and she's got the butterscotch gold eyes. Now when they first had her since when she was being foster kitty. They called her Clementine. And then the kittens were Pumpkin, Spice, and Latte. And then when the other kitten got brought over, that was Grand Grande. Big boy. Um, but she has since then told us in no uncertain terms, that her name is not Clementine. Orange cat that she may be, she is not Clementine. She is Miss Katie. And it's like, yes ma'am. <laughs> yeah, we are back in the situation of dogs have masters, cats have staff. And she is a pretty girl, but she is one of them little petite kitties. Tiny, tiny little thing. Her paws are about the size of my thumb. And just tiny, but she has put that huge mutt dog in his place, some bears. Now, the beige dog and the beige cat can walk past each other and just like give a glare, give a glare, and everybody's fine. Just keep moving. But the big dog is scared of the itty bitty kitty. <laughs> Which is just fun. Anyway, if anybody can think of anything really interesting for me to do on this thing besides show off that, yes, I still have decided I'm going to shine let me know. I mean, I could do some stuff with the stuff I'm writing. And maybe I could read some of the poems or something like that. But I don't know. I, just, I want to do something interesting. I don't want to just be on here to be on here. But I miss being on here. I miss it. Anyway, that's enough rambling for now.
if things work out right, I may be doing a comeback collab with one of the other creators who's been absent for a bit. I'm not going to tell you who it is. You'll just have to wait and see. But, Happy New Year, everybody. Let's please hope that it's much better than some of her recent ones just passed. Please. Bye.